Well, hello everyone. Glad you've joined us this week for midweek and whether it's on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whenever you get this, glad you joined us. Hey, this weekend uh, coming up, we're going to have our annual business meeting. It's one of the best Baptist business meetings I've ever seen. It takes about five minutes. We vote. We did our Envision a couple of weeks ago. And so you got the budget and you got all those kinds of things. Make sure if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call the office. I would say in terms of budgetary things, make sure you call and probably ask Steve. And if he can't help you, I'll jump into that. But we want to make sure that you have every question that you have answered. Looking forward to it. God has provided so beautifully through you. But this weekend, you can look forward to that. And uh, we will be doing that at the end of each of our three services. The following Monday, yes, it's skills camp again. I think we're somewhere close. Might even be over, actually. 600 students. Think about it. What an opportunity. Um, I remember, go way back, uh, you know, 15 plus years ago, back when we came, I think we were in, running in that, you know, 75 to 100 range. So just how God has taken our VBS, now called Skills Camp, to just a whole new level. It's going to be amazing. They're going to be doing wood projects and art and disc golf, all kinds of skills. It's one of the spectacular weeks of our church. I think we're well over close to 200, if not more, volunteers. So when you put them all together, we're going to be like hitting the, the campus there with about 800 people. So pray for us. And I know a lot of you will be joining us. Thursday, next week is that day where we're going to be sharing the gospel. It will certainly happen way before that and will happen probably Friday. So looking forward to that week. It's going to be a great week. Last year, we saw 50 people pray to receive Christ. So how about if you join us and let's go for the same this year, or maybe even more. It's going to be a good one. Periodically, people ask me, like I think almost every week, Pastor, what's the favorite thing, you know, part of your job? I've wrestled with that for 39 or whatever number of years I've been a pastor. I don't know that I have a favorite, but I periodically tell them, because it's true, one of my favorites, and this is going to sound a little weird to you, I think, at least it sounds weird when I say it, one of my favorite things that I get to do is help people walk through a funeral. Now, I know you probably should never say, man, my favorite thing is, you know, dealing with the dead. That, that's not it. There's something that happens in that journey as I get to come alongside of a family, help them plan it, deal with it, the grief of it. And to be quite honest with you, a lot of times the skeletons that come out and the issues that come out in death around a family, I don't know why other than I think God has just given me a love for helping people through that process. Recently, we've had a number of funerals. I have another one coming up. And I just was reflecting, what did I see God do in these events and in these things with people's lives? And why is it that I tell people it's one of the favorite things that I get to do? Um, yes, I enjoy preaching. I love leading with our deacons and, and just being in that team. I love leading our staff, being with them. All of those things are incredible. But funerals, one of the things is that I get to see the beautiful sovereignty of God. Now, this one is not a funeral. It's actually just the death. Pastor Jim was really involved with this lady and one of the members of our church. This lady had just resisted God all of her life. I think for years classified herself as an atheist. And there was a woman in our church, relentless love of this lady, and led her to Christ. Pastor Jim visited her in the hospital and then she transitioned a little bit, but she recently passed away. And I'm not going to give you the exact date because I can't, I can't remember, but it was weeks prior to her death was her salvation. And I just was so, again, taken by the grace of God that this woman who rejected him all of her life just before her death God sent this missionary of love who wouldn't quit. It's one of the things that I like about that I see in death and in funerals is this purpose and love of God that he never gives up on people. 
I think in another time is the provision of God to, to meet families in their greatest need. Death is oftentimes, even for those who are planning on it, those who have time to prepare for it, there are certain issues, financial issues, family issues, reconciliation, reconciliation that comes up. And I saw that in a couple of situations where God began to, you, you could just tell, you could see the movements of God in these families as he was bringing them together and restoring things that were broken. It's a blessed thing to watch God heal and to reconcile people. And sadly, yeah, sometimes it takes the death of a loved one for us to realize what really matters in life. And I think that's one of the things that happens that I enjoy seeing is that all the things that maybe we used to fight about, all the things that we thought were most critical, all the things that we thought were worth separating over, in the midst of death, we find out that they really don't matter all that much. And God senses, kind of, he reprioritizes our lives with death. It's this finality that opens up something that is, uh, this is really beautiful. The last thing that I saw, I kind of was reminded of this past couple of weeks. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a, a great gardener. I'm, I learn all the time from people in our church that are way better than I am. But probably basic gardening 101 with flowers like, you know, it could be uh, rhododendrons or a score of others. When a flower dies, you got to deadhead that thing. And you deadhead a plant so that new life comes in. I think sometimes that's a metaphor for what happens in families. Sometimes when a person passes away, there's a sense of which family members say, well, you know what? Mom used to always gather us together. Mom was the one who we rallied around. Mom was the one who called us for family dinners. And when that person is removed, New life has to come up and somebody has to take that place. And I, I realize that in, in a, the cycle, if you will, of life where people live and die, part of the thing that happens in death is that those who are still living, family members, can take on a new responsibility. Who's going to send out the cards? Who's going to gather the family? Who's going to visit? Who's going to somebody has to arise. And it's kind of like in plants that I, at home, Carrie and I are kind of deadheading, taking the dead ones away so that what? New life comes. There's so many things I could go on forever, but I love helping people journey through grief and loss and death. It's something I never get tired of. It's not that I want people to die. Of course not. It's through death, oftentimes God brings new life. It's through a person's declining years that people are reconciled. It's just one of the favorite parts of my calling, and I'm thrilled to do it, and I'm really thrilled to do it with you. Hopefully not your funeral soon. It's just one of the things that God has blessed us with. I hope you have a great week. Hope is filled with all kinds of joy and sunshine. See you this week for our annual business meeting. And don't forget to pray next week for Skills Camp. God bless you.